Hey there, folks, and welcome back. In our last lesson, we learned how to differentiate and integrate a power series. In short, we perform these operations term by term. The remarkable thing is, the radius of convergence of the series won't change when we apply these transformations. This has important implications when it comes to Taylor and Maclaurin series. Because if you know, say, the Maclaurin series for a function f of x, and you want to know the Maclaurin series for its derivative or its antiderivative, well, you can differentiate or integrate your series term by term to get the new series, but you don't need to perform the ratio test again to find the new radius of convergence. The radius of convergence will be exactly the same. What could change, however, is the interval of convergence. We always have to recheck the endpoints. Now, differentiation and integration are super helpful, but they're not the only shortcuts we know of. Back in our Taylor polynomials unit, we often started with a polynomial for one function and then used a substitution to obtain a polynomial for a related function. We can do the same sort of thing with Taylor and Maclaurin series, but we have to be careful. Substitutions can sometimes affect not only the interval of convergence, but also the radius of convergence. In this video, we're going to show you some examples of how this can occur. So to start us off, I have two functions, 1 over 1 plus 2x and 1 over 1 plus x squared. In each case, we're going to find its Maclaurin series and its radius of convergence. Now, we could start from scratch here by looking for derivatives of these functions and building up Maclaurin polynomials, but I don't think that work is necessary here. After all, these functions remind me a lot of a function that we know a bit more about, 1 over 1 minus x. Remember, this function has a Maclaurin series given by the sum from 0 to infinity of x to the n, and it has a radius of convergence of r equals 1. That is, it's going to converge for all values of x that are less than 1 in absolute value. So perhaps we can start with the function 1 over 1 minus x and its Maclaurin series and make some substitutions to get Maclaurin series for these functions. Let's try this with 1 over 1 plus 2x. To make this look a little bit more like 1 over 1 minus x, I'm going to rewrite the denominator a little. I'm going to write this as 1 over 1 minus minus 2x. Now you can see these functions are really the same except we've replaced x in the first function with minus 2x in the second function. Well, we can make the same replacement in the Maclaurin series. The Maclaurin series for this function should be the sum from 0 to infinity of minus 2x all to the power n. If you expand this out, you'll get the sum from 0 to infinity of minus 1 to the n times 2 to the n times x to the n, which is 1 minus 2x plus 4x squared, minus 8x cubed, and so on. Let's try doing the same thing with our other function, 1 over 1 plus x squared. To make it look like 1 over 1 minus x, I'm going to rewrite the denominator as 1 minus minus x squared. Ah, we have the same function we started with, except instead of an x, we have a minus x squared. I'll do the same substitution in the Maclaurin series. I get the sum from 0 to infinity of minus x squared all to the power n, which, when expanded, gives you the sum from 0 to infinity of minus 1 to the n x to the 2n. That's 1 minus x squared plus x to the 4 minus x to the 8 and so on. Okay, to wrap things up, what are the radii of convergence for our new Maclaurin series? Well, if you think about it, the old series had a radius of r equals 1, right? Meaning it converged whenever x was less than 1 in absolute value. Ah, well, in our first series here, we've replaced x with minus 2x, but otherwise the series is the same. So it's going to converge when minus 2x is less than 1 in absolute value. Let's write this down. The series will converge when the absolute value of minus 2x is less than 1 or equivalently when 2 times the absolute value of x is less than 1. This means the absolute value of x is less than 1 half. So we get a radius of r equals a half. Ah, the radius did indeed change when we made this substitution. What about in our second series? Well, now we've replaced x with minus x squared. So our series will converge when the absolute value of minus x squared is less than 1. 
That is, the series will converge when the absolute value of x squared is less than 1, or equivalently, when the absolute value of x is less than 1. In this case, the radius didn't change. We still converge with a radius of r equals 1. Now that you know how to perform differentiation, integration, and substitutions with power series, you can accomplish some pretty cool stuff. For example, suppose you wanted to know the Maclaurin series for arctan x. If you were to do this without using shortcuts, you'd have to take a whole bunch of derivatives of this function, build up Maclaurin polynomials, notice a pattern in those polynomials so that you could write down the infinite series, and then you'd have to use the ratio test to find the radius of convergence. But with our new machinery, you don't have to do any of that stuff. Instead, simply note that arctan x is the antiderivative of 1 over 1 plus x squared. And we found the Maclaurin series for this function on the last slide. It's the sum from 0 to infinity of minus 1 to the n, x to the 2n. We can integrate this series term by term to get the Maclaurin series for arctan. It would be the sum from 0 to infinity of minus 1 to the n, x to the 2n plus 1 over 2n plus 1. Of course, integration will also add a plus c term, but it's not too hard to show that this c must be 0. After all, a function and its Taylor series must have the same value at the center of the approximation. In this case, since we're dealing with a Maclaurin series, that center is 0. If you plug in 0 to both sides of this equation, well, the left side is going to be arctan of 0, which is 0, and the right side is going to have just the c term left. All the x's will die. So it must be the case that c is 0, and therefore this guy here is the Maclaurin series for arctan. If you expand it out, you'll get x minus x cubed over 3 plus x to the 5 over 5, and so on. What about the radius of convergence? Well, on the last slide, we saw that this series for 1 over 1 plus x squared had a radius of r equals 1, and the radius won't change under integration. So with no work at all, we find that the radius of convergence for our new series is r equals 1. Incredible! We were able to do this so quickly by using a few shortcuts. As an exercise for you, see if you can find the interval of convergence for this series. By checking the convergence at the endpoints, x equals plus or minus 1, you should find that the series converges on the closed interval from minus 1 to 1. Now before moving on, I want to take a moment to appreciate what we've just shown. This is telling us that for all x values between minus 1 and 1, arctan of x is equal to this crazy infinite series. So if you plug in your favorite x value from this interval, say x equals 1, you're going to get equality. On the left side, we have arctan of 1, which we know to be pi over 4. And on the right side, we get this wacky expression, 1 minus a third plus a fifth minus a seventh and so on. Hold on a second. Pi over 4 is equal to this? That means that if we multiply both sides by 4, we find that pi is 4 minus 4 thirds plus 4 fifths minus 4 sevenths and so on. Isn't this crazy? This gives you a really simple way to approximate pi using fractions, although this series does converge pretty slowly. This blew my mind when I first saw it as an undergrad, and it still excites me today. Taylor series are pretty awesome. All right, for our last example, I'd like to find the Maclaurin series and radius of convergence for the function x squared over 8 plus x cubed. Okay, now this does already remind me of the function 1 over 1 minus x. Can we find a way to relate this expression back to that function? I think we can. The first problem I see is the numerator. We should have a 1 in the numerator, not an x squared. So I'm going to factor this x squared out. I'm going to write x squared over 8 plus x cubed as x squared times 1 over 8 plus x cubed. So the numerator looks good, looks the same as 1 over 1 minus x, but the denominator doesn't quite look right. In particular, I'm supposed to have a 1 here, not an 8. So what do I do? Well, I take the 8 out as well. I'll write this as x squared over 8, and in the brackets I have 1 over 1 plus, I borrowed an 8, so I need to write this as x cubed over 8. 
Okay, almost there. We have 1 over 1 plus something. I'd like 1 over 1 minus something. So I'm going to rewrite this one more time as x squared over 8 times 1 over 1 minus minus x cubed over 8. Ah, okay, now we're in business. We can use the Maclaurin series for 1 over 1 minus x, but replace x with minus x cubed over 8. That gives me x squared over 8 times the sum from n equals 0 to infinity. Normally, I would write x to the n, but now I'm going to write minus x cubed over 8 to the n. If I expand this out, I get x squared over 8 times the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of minus 1 to the n, x to the 3n divided by 8 to the n, and now I bring these guys back inside. My final Maclaurin series is given by the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of minus 1 to the n, x to the 3n plus 2, over 8 to the n plus 1. Awesome! What about the radius of convergence? Well, just like in example 1, we're going to start with the radius of convergence of the building block function. The building block was 1 over 1 minus x. The Maclaurin series for that function converges when the absolute value of x is less than 1. So we're going to ask that this expression in the brackets, minus x cubed over 8, be less than 1. After all, we're plugging that into 1 over 1 minus x. Well now, if minus x cubed over 8 in absolute value is less than 1, it means that the absolute value of x cubed is less than 8. If I take the cube root on both sides, you'll find that the absolute value of x has to be less than 2. So our radius is 2. You can see that it changed when we made this substitution. These are the types of things you have to be careful of. Now finally, you might be wondering about this multiplication by x squared over 8. How does that affect our radius of convergence? Well, in this case, it won't affect it at all. The reason why is because this function is a polynomial. We can think of it like a Taylor series with infinite radius of convergence. We're multiplying that by a series with radius 2. Well, just like in the example from the last video where we added two Taylor series, we have to restrict our attention to the smaller radius of convergence. We will definitely have convergence with a radius of 2.